Welcome to another book podcast where our Bikari insights on books are discussed. The book we'll be talking about is a little different from the previous books that I have discussed because it's all about poetry. Yes, I may be a no poem or prose enthusiast and the reason why I read this book was mainly because of the curiosity as to why this type of books is a sensation to many, especially to millennials and Generation Z out there. In high school, I learned about sonnets and this time in my after school life, I picked up from the hundreds of poetry books entitled Lullabies written by Langleaf. I'm familiar with the author because I follow her on Twitter for years now. I read one of her works but not a literary piece. It's actually a novel entitled Sad Girls. It was a long time ago that I have read this book and to be honest, I don't remember the story. I just recall that it was about teenagers and their love life and some stories about suicide. I bought that book because it was one of the best selling books at that time in the YA section or in the young adult section. I enjoyed the book perhaps but I think I am old for YA novels. So recently I read another work of this author, which actually is in her line of literary works. She has written lots of books, mainly poetry books, and his husband also writes those lyrical poems. So maybe, yeah, she's living the best of her life. And I think that to have that level of poetry skills require a husband who is as poetic as you, who's going to write about you as well. Or it could be the other way around that they became or they become poets because they fell in love with each other through their works. I don't know. But thinking that two poets are Real life partners makes me want to weep for myself a little. There are readers who are fascinated with poetry. Some uses it as an outlet of their mental health issues. And it's science-based that almost all forms of art are mentally therapeutic. We utilize art and music therapy for mental health patients. And I watched in someone's vlog that she's thankful for poetry because it kind of helped her to cope with her mental problems. If you are experiencing mental health issues, I suggest you find a healthy outlet to express your emotions. And poetry could be one way to do that. As a reader, I am not totally fascinated with poetry and with this book. Maybe I just don't appreciate poetry as it is. But if you had read perhaps the classical poems like Shakespearean sonnets, those poetic works set the bar, you know, too high in terms of poetry works. Like they are the standards of poetry for me so in the book it's not all poems or prose it has illustrations and short paragraphs maybe the short paragraphs are also called prose i don't know i love the illustrations though they have unique simplicity and you really could appreciate it because It's a work of the hands by the same author. It's just nice because her drawings can convey emotions in their simplest forms. You know, an illustration of a girl in pencil 
is very classic. As I said, the book has short, epic, epic short, short stories. Like sometimes the characters of these stories are words, such as characters such as altruistic and despondency. And altruistic and despondency are talking to each other and it's amazing. It's cute, really, and I don't want to have or I don't really have negative opinions of this book because there's nothing negative I know about poetry. Or maybe I am an illiterate person of modern poetry and that's it except that yes there is sensitive media here a poem that includes uh, rated SPG and I don't want to tolerate that because it ruined the class of the book that's my opinion plus there are readers that are too young you, you don't want or maybe you'd want this type of books in your center table or in the living room because but because of that content i think that sensitive media content i think people would have second thoughts in displaying the book it might be picked by a random kid and wonder why does underwears are mentioned in here Okay, so I read as well from a blog. This is not my opinion, but I read from a blog about negative opinions on modern poetry, how they can't understand why a book of few words sell that much when they offer nothing but empty words. I think these are self-help book writers that have this kind of opinion, but it's their opinion, so let's respect that. I don't think they're empty words but surely um it's not that great to buy a book that has three lines in one page so am i buying this book for the space it has or do the publisher or author wants me to doodle on these spaces maybe write a few lyrical lines to compete with the writer but maybe it's aesthetics. I understand if it's aesthetics, it's not practical. It makes the book or the poem stand out from the rest of the book. But it's not practical. Especially if you have a tight budget. So again, I am going to end this podcast telling you that if you are into poetry just be you i know people who has poetic talents they write poems as a way to express their emotions and it's mind-blowing when someone writes a poem for you i have written a poem once for someone because it was a requirement in my literature class and it sucks so i did not give it to the person that's why i have high respects to these poetry writers even when sometimes you're not sure of what is going on within the the few lines they have written to be able to though to be able to steer emotions using few descriptive words is a rare talent for instance i am gonna read you the this excerpt from the passage written by Langleaf entitled A Dream. Quote, I don't remember exactly, but the whole time I was dreaming, I knew you were mine. Unquote. I hope we all could enjoy a little bit of poetry in our lives and check out the works of our modern-day poets. Thank you.